Ow! Calm down, you baby. Apparently, French children. Ow! Ow! Calm down. I can't. Apparently, French children used to be given a riddle when they were growing up. The riddle goes as follows. Imagine that there's a water lily growing on a pond. It doubles in size every day. On the 30th day, the water lily will cover the entire pond and smother everything underneath. The pond's owner does not want this to happen, but he will only notice there's a problem when the lily covers exactly half the pond. So I ask you, on what day Will this doubling in size lily cover exactly half the pond? And what does this thought experiment have anything to do with Horizon Zero Dawn? Well, let's find out. Ow. Calm down. I don't want to. That's my secret. Now entering the facility. The answer to our riddle is that a water lily that doubles in size every day and will cover a pond on the 30th day will only seem like a problem when it covers half the pond on the 29th day. This riddle is supposed to show you the deceptive power of so-called exponential growth, the operative variable behind the inciting incident of Horizon Zero Dawn, hands down one of my favorite video games and sci-fi stories of the last few years. And with the sequel to Zero Dawn now on the horizon, <laughs> I thought it'd be the perfect time to go through the science of the so-called Pharaoh Plague. Now, if you're not familiar, the Pharaoh Plague is the game's take on the classic Grey Goo scenario. That scenario being when self-replicating machines use biomass as fuel and exponentially spread across the surface of the Earth, using everything up down to the atom. It's an apocalypse. Now, we've already gone through exponential growth and Grey Goo on a previous program, so instead today, I want to look at the game's timeline. In the game, there's a very specific amount of time in which Project Zero Dawn needs to complete. How realistic is the time frame for this apocalypse? How realistic is the game's version of Ecocide? <laughs> well, let's find out. Gamer Chair Descend. Oh. In the classic self-replicating machine apocalypse, nanoscale robots meticulously disassemble everything that they touch, atom by atom, using these atoms to make more of themselves and then spread exponentially across a surface. The robots in Zero Dawn are a billion times bigger, but the idea is exactly the same. So how could we get a estimate for the time we'd have before a swarm of killer robots literally takes every molecule of oxygen from the sky and grain of NaCl from the salty sea? <gasps> well, it's not actually all that hard, at least for an educated guess. According to the game, the Pharaoh Plague started here, somewhere in Southeast Asia or Australia. Now, the logical way these robots would radiate out is from that point, equally in all directions, to the antipodal point on the Earth's sphere, the exact geometric opposite point for the least amount of travel time, right? So now I ask you, if a swarm of killer robots radiated out from this point to that point, equally in all directions with a constant velocity, how much time would humans have? No, I'm, I'm actually asking you right now. Aria, quiz knows, quiz them. Why do I keep doing, I should see a therapist about that. Pop quiz time. If killer robots move across the Earth with an average velocity, V, and the Earth has a radius, R, how long will it be before you humans are finally wiped off the surface of the Earth? I mean, tragically destroyed, oh no. Remember that the area of a circle is pi R squared. The circumference of a circle is two pi R. And that the surface area of a sphere is four pi R squared. Feel free to pause the video now and use some paper and your Graph Gear 500 pencil, not a sponsor. Oh, and if you could hit the like button on the video right now, I would really appreciate it. Okay, time's up, pencils down. The correct answer to our little pop quiz today, thanks Aria, is C. See, not all that complicated looking. The minimum amount of time that we would have as humans in this horizon scenario to get ready is equal to half of a great circle route divided by the velocity of the machines. It's only half of this great circle route because remember the machines are traveling equally in all directions around the sphere and meeting in the middle. This means half of the circumference of Earth, which is 2R, so it's pi R divided by 
velocity. So velocity becomes the really important factor here, right? Because the radius of Earth doesn't change unless you're a flat earther and then you're, you're wrong about so many other things that are more important. So what should this velocity actually be? Swarm one is complete. Shall I deploy? <laughs> no, what, Arya, you're so crazy. We don't have a swarm of, just wait, wait to deploy the machines until we release our NFT plan on Twitter and then we will use the machines to quell resistance. <laughs> I mean, look at these guys. <laughs> They'll buy my monkeys. Estimating the speed of a swarm of murder bots is difficult because the game has different bad robots moving at different speeds at different times. So let's try to come up with some range based on what we observe with our eye holes in game. Well, it looks like the largest of the bots that you face move at basically a slow walking pace, while the more scorpiony, agile murder bots can keep up with main character Aloy no problem when she is sprinting. So that's another value for a range. If we plug this range into our equation that we got previously, we get somewhere between three weeks and five months for this swarm of pharaoh robot military peacekeepers to cover the planet. Now here's the all-important comparison. Project Zero Dawn Project Lead, Elizabeth Sobeck in the game, says that the Pharaoh Swarm will encompass the entire planet in 15 months. Hmm, this is not even close to our purely velocity-based times. So is there another way to make this game's timeline make more sense and give the story the B of the D? I think there is. Benefit of the doubt That's what that the first and most cited paper to quantify a nanobot catastrophe was written by Dr. Robert A. Freitas Jr. all the way back in 2000, when life was simpler and the matrix was actually good. After going over many potential scenarios and developing a lot of unique equations for estimations, Freitas concluded that a swarm of self-replicators is unlikely to proceed as quickly as velocity alone may dictate, and the main reason why is temperature. Dr. Freitas' ultimate time estimate for a swarm of murder bots swallowing the world depended on one simple fact about our universe. Anything, any object, person, machine that does physical work will get hot. Well, yes, but also no. Nothing in this universe is 100% efficient. Entropy always wins, and so whenever physical work is being done, waste heat will be generated. Whether that's you working out at the gym and getting hot, whether that's your brakes on your car getting hot when you slam on them, whether that's your phone's battery getting warm in your hand when you constantly check if she didn't leave you on red. No, she did. Get over it. Now, when the work being done is consuming all the biomass on an entire planet, you can imagine that the waste heat generated from all that might be a limiting factor. So Dr. Freitas looked at the last replication cycle for all of these murder bots, like the day before our water lily swallows the whole pond. And he used the waste heat generated to calculate how hot Earth might get in this last replication cycle, considering certain efficiencies that we know about stuff in the world right now. And what he calculated, I think actually applies to Horizon. So are we not deploying Swarm no, I, 1 or? No, I said, wait until the NFT avatars of my head and face. <laughs> They're gonna hate it. In his paper, Dr. Freitas concludes that the most ravenous of machines might eat the world in as little as a hundred seconds. But like we were talking about with waste heat, if they did this this fast, they would generate enough heat to heat the world up to 5,000 Kelvin. And I don't need a calculator to tell you that that would- ah! That would literally set everything on fire. The robots would probably not want to eat this quickly because they would vaporize all their potential fuel. So what's more likely is that they'd want to keep the average temperature of Earth from their waste heat generation below the boiling point of water so they can still eat organic material. And so 100 seconds becomes a million seconds, which is under two weeks and still nowhere close to our horizon zero dawn value. However, and here's the most important point today. It is shown that the Horizon Zero Dawn robots are very sensitive to temperature. They're prone to overheating, and in fact, shooting their overheating heat dispersal methods is a way to defeat them. So, 
Dr. Freitas calculates that if you take the most temperature sensitive robots, you can estimate that they would want to increase the mean temperature of Earth so little that it would take them 50 million seconds to consume everything, or, drum roll, 20 months. Now, from all of our estimations, we have a time frame that the Horizon Zero Dawn story fits squarely within. This makes this apocalypse and the game's story more probable than not. Sure, the sci-fi isn't perfect, but I'm completely satisfied with where it is. You might say that this fantastic game and its story <laughs> is straight fire. Until next time. Ah! Now exiting the facility. No, like I said, let's wait until there's at least two swarms of murder bots. The first one never quite works. Hey, thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today especially, I want to recognize everyone who hit that like and subscribe button. It's an experiment. Do it and maybe more people will see. If, uh, if you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to see videos early, join our members only Discord, have private members only live streams with yours truly and this amazing hair. Oh, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every video. And there's, there's that's so many of you. How am I ever going to pass that? I love Horizon Zero Dawn so much. So excited to play through Forbidden West multiple times. And what I like about the developer is they're obviously paying attention to the sci-fi elements and the science that goes into it. There's a lot of science in the audio logs and some of the ancillary character stuff. I would not actually be surprised if they read that Dr. Frieda's paper from the year 2000. So if you're a guerrilla developer and you want to tell me that you actually read that paper, go down into the comments and tell me. I will make up big thing about it. Okay. Thanks for watching. Oh, and hit that like button if you haven't liked for the hair already. Okay. Okay.